first of all, obviously, as a spay neuter organization, I want all the money to go <laughs> into spay neuter and the mobile the mobile clinics. Every single one of them is out there should be continuing. And if the voucher program needs, you know, that should be first and the voucher second. But I'm going to talk about the voucher program, and I know I provided, presented all of you uh, commissioners again with information on the vouchers. Uh, but uh, it was said here today that the when they go into the um, into the uh, shelters to get a voucher, that they're provided with all the information. Well, I have to differ with that. I've been working on vouchers since 1999, and my mantra for all of you that are as old as I am and have been around has always been: it is not what you distribute; it is what you redeem. And it was very, I took on March 26th, and I've done this, this is like my sixth time. I went on to the, uh, onto the website, in November 14th, 2012 was the last time you listed all the, uh, all the, uh, the contributing uh, contracting uh, veterinarians. Uh, about five of them are no longer on there. They're not accepting the vouchers anymore. They're not accepting them because they're not getting paid. And in the past, there used to be a lot more veterinarians on there, a lot more that we would all use. But they all passed, they all said no more because they weren't getting paid in a timely manner. And as you can see, I called every single one of them of the uh, providers to see, you know, what they charge. And like you said, you know, some of them you have to have shots. Some of them you have to have, you know, an office call. Some of them you have to do. This is not provided to the people. When they go in, they're handed a list. And actually, I fought for years with different general managers to say nobody's going to use them if you don't have prices on them. They said finally, okay, I'll put the we'll put a price listing on the bottom. We'll say, you know, cat space from thirty dollars to two hundred dollars. Really? I mean, that's quite of a bit of a difference. And one of the cats, one of the organizations on here that's accepting, or one of the clinics is charging three hundred and eighty-five dollars for a cat. So tell me, is a thirty-dollar voucher? Does a seventy-dollar voucher do any good? No. So I think that, and there is ways, and there's a lot. And, and when I did call up, I want you to know that we asked for specific things. Was it a cat spay, you know, or in a dog spay? A certain amount doesn't need blood work. And here's the thing: I never asked if there was a pregnancy charge or an in heat charge. And believe me, they're all going to have those. There are some on there that do not do that, and and we refer to uh, all the time. One of them is. Uh, 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 this I'm going to call it clinical because that's how I, I uh, uh, you know, I, I did it, and, there, and there's some others. And I have no problem that, you know, Spay for LA is using vouchers. Uh, there's a group of people who are completely leaving out of this, and they're the most important people in this city when what we're talking about, because they not only reach the low-income people, they reach all the people across the city, and those are our animal control officers. They do the hardest job, the, the saddest work, they go into the most dangerous neighborhoods, they talk to everybody, and they're also not educated and armed, nor are they commended and encouraged for the work they do. How long has you heard Ms. Barnett mention the great work that these officers that are out there right now going out picking up the animals out of the street in the dark, in the gang-infested neighborhoods, risking their lives? They're the ones we also need to be investing in, and they need to learn how to talk to people about spay and neuter that don't need vouchers and so forth, as well as the people that do. The, the, they do not have that program and program anymore. We used to teach it for them about spay neuter, what's in it for me, so that they can talk to the people about the benefits to them, that your animal will not be out roaming in the street, will not be fighting, it will be more of a pet for you, it will be taking care of your yard, uh, your male dog won't be humping your two-year-old girl or your best friend's leg, if you have to get very, very graphic. You have to use everything you have to convince people it's a benefit to them to have their animal spayed or neutered in some groups. There's some groups that you have to really get tough, and that's, we don't have administrative citations, we can only get so tough. So when you start reaching in their pocketbook then for not complying with the law, regardless of their income level, we'll start getting a lot of uh, conformance with the law. But let's not forget the first round, the first round of people that go out and deal with everybody and risk their lives at doing this. Um, first off, I'd like to say that uh, what the Amanda Foundation said, the presentation that they put on was excellent. Please listen to everything she said because it's so true, like all of it, su super true um, and important. Um, my, my statement would be, why is the recommendation to cut the yearly allotted spay and neuter money? Um, instead, why isn't the recommendation just to actually use all of the money, year in and year out, or even increase that money? Um, instead, not cut it. It's not being used. It's a failure on some department. It should be used. Um, there's really no excuse to not use the money. It's not an issue of people not taking you up on the services. It's a failure of community outreach and accessibility, basically. 
Um, also, the vouchers do not make up the full cost of the surgery for medium and especially large dogs. Um, so why can't some of that leftover untouched money go to further help the low-income communities of Los Angeles who are primarily the ones affected by all of this? Um, it's constantly about education and outreach, constantly, over and over and over and over again. So, and I did get here in time to make my actual public comment, but I would also like to, if there's a position that's been taken on um, AB 2343, I don't know if the cities came out with the position, if they could comment on that before the meeting's over, that would be great as well. Thanks. I wanted to say that, of course, the Spaniard event is absolutely fantastic going out there. The whole point is, the whole problem is that it has to be easy. It has to be easy to get your animals fixed. It has to be easy. It's very difficult to get the vouchers. It's difficult to qualify. You can get a free education in Los Angeles by not being a uh, legal person. You can get uh, DWP and you can rent an apartment without proving that you are a citizen. Apparently, Lifeline, I just found out from a young lady that pointed out to me on the website, in order to get Lifeline service, you have to provide your social security number, which means that you have to be legal. So you can never get the DWP. Oh, that can't be part of your qualification, okay? So that makes it difficult. And again, um, I think Terry's going to the shelters and talking to the shelter workers is very impressive because every time I go to the shelter and I say things to the, I say things to the kennel workers and the clerks, they have no idea what I'm talking about. They don't give any information out. They don't, they don't care. <laughs> A lot of them don't care. Um, the fact that I've asked repeatedly about the vouchers and how hard it is to get them and what is the qualification that they only have the one answer. One answer, which is the WT, WDP Lifeline service. It's just appalling. They don't care. They don't know what the services are. They'll just point to maybe the stack that you lay over there the, in your wasted paper, you know, with the panel for the service. <coughs> um, it has to be easy. I don't think council, council people have are carrying around uh, vouchers in their pockets like fairy dust or applications. It, can't, it costs $15 to park to go see your council person. They're not, people aren't going to park down there and go ask their council person for an application that they have to send in to get a voucher. Okay? Okay, people don't speak English. They go to the pound. There's a surly clerk that doesn't want to be bothered with them, that doesn't speak, that doesn't speak Spanish or other languages. They're not going to get that information. Oh, I was a person that was through my rescue was about voucher books. And I couldn't give them away hard enough. I tried. Oh, these are only $30 voucher books. I put an ad on Craigslist that said free, that said discount spay spay neuter, and I had people emailing me right and left, and that's who I gave those vouchers to. And I used all those vouchers. They were not wasted. People have to be able. It just easy has to be the word. Easy to get. Easy to spay and neuter. Time. Ma mobile clinics. Thank you so much for taking over your. Dealing Bob over there, and all you guys do the mobiles. Thank you so much. Okay, everyone, how many more years are we going to talk about this? Seriously, I mean, I think I'm going into a decade of this dialogue. I'm not kidding. I've been here longer than all of you. So how about this idea? How about forget the vouchers? Just forget it, because no one poor or undocumented can get them. Why don't we take the money that the city is so tight-fisted about because they're so afraid that the rescue people might get them, and that is true. When they said uh, people were using them, you know, the shameful rescue people that might just be broke and use a city voucher to fix an animal for somebody else, that's what that's all about. That's the honest truth. Okay, let's be candid. So if it's such a difficulty that we can't seem to, we should be able to just hand, whenever I'm at Rouse, I think, why can't there be a wicker basket full of vouchers? So all the low-income people can just grab one on their way out. Wow, what a great idea, but it will never happen. So I just, do, I just ponder this. So why don't we scrap the voucher program entirely, take all that money and distribute it to the spay and neuter mobile vans and let them deal with it, since they're out in the community and they're actually doing the work. Because if I have to hear one more debate about, I mean, this list, this, where's that, where's the qualification list? Oh, here it is, here. This, this, this 
is never going to happen in real world. Do you guys know the neighborhoods? I'm in this is na this is my neighborhood. They don't go and apply. They don't go online. They don't have computers. They don't even care. Easy is what she was saying. That is exactly true. Easy. Easy like getting an ice cream cone. Anything more complicated than that, low-income people that didn't care in the first place, they're not going to do it. That's why education is free, food is free, everything is free, and they come into that pet care center and they don't understand why the pet care isn't free, because everything else is subsidized. Why not pets? I think that's a good idea, actually. So that's my vote for today. Forget the vouchers. Forget them. You guys, you won't give them out like candy the way they should be given out, because easy is not what this is about. And you try, let's, let's be also candid, try low income and not educated. They don't know how to do this. I'm sorry, they just, they don't do it, they won't comply, so please, take the money and give it to Terry, give it to Snap, give it to all those people, and stop with the little voucher obsession. It's not gonna happen. The low income people will not do it. And I am in these crappy alleys arguing with people all the time myself. I've had to call LAPD twice just to protect me from being like a threat to be shot at. So I do know what I'm talking about. I, this is so bureaucratic and ridiculous. Stop. Just stop the voucher program. Forget it. Good. I'm Ariana Viturvik and I'm the Executive Director of the Coalition of Pets and Public Safety. Uh, we are the organization that in st initially started mobile pro uh, hospital programs in LA in 2001. We purchased the first mobile hospital and that, is, that very hospital enabled uh, Terry to actually operate the clinic and the program that she uh, so proudly speaks of. So I wanted to clarify a couple of clarifications. Um, Spay for LA is our second clinic that we purchased in 2010 and so graciously found animals have partnered with us to actually uh, grow this program and then after three years the, 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 the program became an independent 501c3 organization that is self-sustaining and is uh, very successfully addressing the issues that we're all here passionate about. So I think it's really important to keep in mind that those same, that that's the coalition is the key here, that we cannot bring each other down, that the, the goal here is just like you were able to start you know, your program uh, because of other people that have enabled you, believed in you, and supported you, the same goes with others. And, and Spay for LA is not a billionaire's pet project. It's an independent organization that uh, runs independently, fundraises, and does what every other uh, high volume, uh, low cost program does. They, they will offer services such as low-cost vaccines to offset some of the costs, but uh, where, wherever they can and when the funds are available, the surgeries are free, and that certainly is the case for Space for LA because this is one of the programs that we co-manage with found animals, and we have a very clear understanding of the parameters and, and, uh, and execution of the program. So that's just wanted to clarify.